something about the blood. And what can they? Nothing but the blood. What? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Oh. Welcome, 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 good morning. Welcome. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Welcome, welcome. As you join, go ahead and share. That makes me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing but the blood. For me. Thank you, Jesus. For me. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. On the cross there is blood. Go ahead and share as you join. Welcome, welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus. That makes me white as snow. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to this morning. Good morning. And welcome to breakfast. Go ahead and share this on your page. So somebody could see that the woman of God is alive. Yes, we are alive. And I am alive. Hey, Jesus. The devil couldn't take me out last night. I'm here. Go ahead and begin to share. Hallelujah. Reckless love of God. It chases me down. Leave the 99. I don't deserve this. I don't deserve the things that God is doing in my life. Jesus. I don't deserve it. Some of us, we don't deserve the life that we have, that God has blessed us with. We don't deserve it. Because we don't appreciate it. We show no form of appreciation, but the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God that we don't deserve. That's what he gave us. We don't deserve it. Some of us, we already know we don't deserve it, and this is why we don't behave right. But God is watching us. He's watching us. He's coming after me. Thank you, Jesus. He's coming after me. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. I thank God for his goodness and his mercy. I don't deserve the life he gives me. I don't deserve it. So I thank him that he favored me. I thank him that he remembered me. 
my God, he's moving some people. And he's bringing a new group of people that deserve to be in my company. Only he could do that. Because I choose out of the flesh. That's what I used to do. And now God is saying, I'm cleaning house. And I'm sending a brand new set of people that I, the Lord your God, have selected to be among you. And Lord, we say thank you for your reckless love, your never-ending reckless love. Lord, we say thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercies. Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, Jesus, that you have chosen that you have chosen for us. And what we have chosen out of our flesh, you have removed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, we say thank you for removing what didn't belong in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we say thank you for the setback. Some of them were assigned to hold us back. And Lord, we thank you for removing them. Those that have been praying against our prayers. Lord, we thank you for removing them. Those that have been standing in the way of our breakthrough. Lord, we say thank you because you have moved them. My God, those that have been standing before our children to block them. Lord, we say thank you for removing them. My God, we say thank you, Lord. For taking care of our enemies, our secret enemies. You took care of them, Lord. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. To remove the ones that we didn't know about. Thank you, Lord, for removing the ones that we were thinking about. Jesus, you have done it one more time. Thank you, Lord. For those that are fighting us, thank you, Jesus, for removing them. For those that are secretly fighting, glory to God, we say thank you, Lord, for removing them. Many are gone. And the remnants that are left behind, you will destroy them. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we say thank you. Thank you, Mababoko Shata. Thank you, Lord. For removing the obstacle from our way. The setback. The disappointments. We say thank you Jesus. We take victory. And we give you glory. Glory to God. We know you can do it Lord. The remnants of the destruction. That was set in our path. Oh God we know you are going to move them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Glory to God. Those that have assigned themselves unto us. My God, remove them now. Those that have attached themselves that don't belong. My God, boko, boko, sata. remove them in the name of Jesus Christ. Release us, O oh God. Set us free. Set our children free. Maba, boko, sataya. Those that have been blocking our finances. My God, remove them. Remove them. Remove them. Those that are praying against our children, remove them. Those that are secretly fighting our children, remove them. Those that have set thorns in our path, remove them, oh God. Let your will be done and take your glory. We take the victory now. Man todo boboko sataya. We shoot them down. We shoot them down right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every secret enemy that our children have, we shoot them down now. Every secret enemies that we have, we shababoko sataya. Those that have been blocking our path, oh God, take care of it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we set fire. My God. We set the fire of God. 
to them that have set fire in our path, to them that have set thorns in our path, we set fire in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Those that are fighting against our health, glory to God, we send the fire of God to destroy them. Those that are fighting against our well-being, man to the bobo kosho to you. We set the fire of God to burn them. It doesn't matter their location. Those that are fighting against our children's well-being, glory to God. It's time to pray. It's time to pray every arrow that was sent forth, my God, to stop us. We send it back. We send it back. We send it back. We send it back to destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every arrow that was set out to stop us, we send it back. Back to sender, back to sender, back to sender, back to sender, mighty God, back to the sender, back to the sender, back to the sender, every sickness that was planned for us and our children, back to the sender, back to the sender. Back to the sender. We send it back. Every arrow of destruction. We send it back to the sender. We send it back. Glory to God. Every ill feeling. That they display before us. We send it back. We send it back. Marco Roboko Sharabako Sataya. Devil, you are a liar. We finish you today. My God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we present ourselves before you to worship you. And Lord, we say thank you. Lord, we say thank you for making a way where there seemed to be no way. Lord, we say thank you for opening doors that no man can shut. Lord, we say thank you, Makorobo Kosoto. We say thank you, Jesus, because you have provided. Mighty God, you have provided. We are still here. We are alive. You have provided the necessary things that we need. My God, you have provided our necessity. So Lord, we say thank you. Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Jehovah Nisi. Oh God, El Shaddai. Mighty God, we say thank you. Elohim, Jesus. Hey, baby, we sataya. We praise you, Lord. We magnify you now. We worship you today. We give you all the praise as we lift our hands to you. What a mighty God we serve. Glory to your name. We say thank you. Of all the 70 odd names that they have given you. Jesus, we say thank you, Lord. Of all the over 70 different names that they call you. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, we praise you now. We worship you today. We give you all the praise. Take glory from our life. Take glory from our children's life. Take glory out of my home. And I take the victory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for removing sickness and disease. Thank you for removing the enemy. Thank you for removing the wicked one. Thank you, Lord God. I could never do it on my own. 
Thank you for taking out the distraction and the destruction out of our home, out of our life, out of the ministry. We say thank you, Jesus. Hey! Glory to God. We say thank you. We bless you today. We worship you today. We adore you today. We praise your holy name, O oh God. Those that are sitting on your children's name. We bind them up right now. Those that are fighting against your children. We bind them up. Those are planning. Those are who are feeding off of your children. We bind them up. Those who are stopping your children. We stop them now. Those who are blocking your finances. We release ourselves in the name of Jesus Christ. We come against every cancer right now. HIV and AIDS. Diabetes. High blood pressure. We put you under subjection. We call it to dry up and die by the fire of God. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hey! Moko Roboboko Sata. Man to the Roboboko Sata. Every marital problems in your house. We finish it by the fire of God. Every disobedient wife. We put you under subjection. Every disobedient husband. We put you under subjection. Glory to God. Makora Baba Kasataya. Oh Baba Koshoto. We place our job at the cross right now. We place the finances at the cross right now and we declare we are blessed. We declare we are blessed. We decree and we declare we are blessed. We are blessed by the best. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Koshoto. My God, he said he will make a way where there seemed to be no way. And therefore, Lord, we know you are our covenant keeper. And we say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Lord. You have never, never break your covenant. You have never broke a promise. And you have never lost a fight. We say thank you, Lord, for fighting for us. We say thank you, Lord, for healing we thank you, Lord, for your deliverance. You have given us the liberty. You have set us free, Lord. We say thank you. You have moved our enemies, O oh God. You have moved the secret enemies. We say thank you, Jesus. The secret enemies that our children have been dealing with, you have moved them. And Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you, Lord. You are a revealer of secrets. Holy Spirit, we say thank you. You are a revealer of secrets. And Holy Spirit, we say thank you for revealing secrets to us. Glory to God. It is done. Father, we cover every soul that is here. I cover this platform right now in the blood. And for those that are on their way coming, oh God. Bless them today. And the ones that are sharing this platform across the nations. Let your will be done in their life so they can get victory. Let it be done. And that person in that will cheer. That person in that will cheer. You will rise up and walk in the name of Jesus Christ. You will take up your bed and walk. Glory to God. Take up your bed and walk. It is done. It is done. Even now, O oh God, I cover myself in the blood. From the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I cover my children wherever they are right now. I cover my grandchildren. Bless them, O oh God. I cover my family. Let your will be done. Let your will be done, O oh God. Manifest yourself. O oh God. 
We say, thank you, Jesus. It is finished. You said it on the cross. It is finished. And we decree and we declare, it is finished. Somebody go ahead and declare, it is finished. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is finished. My God, it is finished. It is finished. Wherever you are connecting from, welcome to breakfast. Wherever you are connecting from, welcome to breakfast with Jesus. Jesus, my God. Hallelujah. Wherever you are connecting from, welcome. Jesus, glory to God. Wherever you are connecting from, Welcome, 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 glory to God, welcome, bakora bakora bako sataya, welcome, happy Friday to all, welcome, don't allow the enemy to rob you in this time, it is the plan of the enemy to disgrace you. Hallelujah. Welcome. And good morning. If you are coming here to eat food, when you come, cover this platform. If this is a place that you find yourself coming to pray and expect, yes, God to bless you. So when you get here, pray. And ask God to cover the woman of God. Ask God to bless the platform. Ask God to bless the ministry. Ask God to have his way here. Holy Spirit is welcome here every day. Even when I'm not on the platform. The Holy Spirit is there working it out. There are some people who will watch, will watch after we're done. And the Holy Spirit will arrest some of them. And this is why I encourage you to go ahead and begin to share it on your page. I encourage you to share it. Glory be to God. Jesus. Mighty God. Mighty warrior. Great in battle. He is a mighty warrior. What a mighty God we serve. Whatever you're going through, leave it at the cross. I encourage you. Whatever your situation is, leave it at the cross. Whatever they said, my God, I came to tell you, they lied to you. Because God is able to do more than you are expecting him to do. God is able to do more than your doctor. He's able to do more than your mortgage broker. He's able to do more than your bank manager. He's able to do more in your life. Somebody said it is impossible. Immigration said it's impossible. And God is saying all things are possible to them that believe. They say you'll never make it. I came to tell you, you and your children will make it. They said you'll never be anything. You and your children will be there to watch them fall. Glory to God. Those who have been praying against your breakthrough. Mighty God. Those who have been praying against your ministry. Those who have been praying against your marriage. Those who have been praying against your health. Those who have been praying against your life. You will sit and watch them fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Those who have been planning against you, you will watch them go down. Mighty God. Those who have been, yes. You will watch them fall. You will see them with your eyes. The Bible said with your eyes, you will behold the reward of the wicked. You will see them. You will see them because they can't come near you. You will see them. When I left Jamaica, I moved to the Cayman Islands and life was rough. Life was tough. And many people, they planned my future. Many people, 20-something years ago, 
My mother called me one day and told me that they are down there saying that I will die from AIDS because they deem me as that kind of person. They deem me as a prostitute. They didn't know me, so they deem. They purpose. They speak against my health. They spoke against my life. But let me tell us something. God is not calling weak people to, 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 yes, to represent him. God is not calling perfect people to represent him. God is calling those who will pull out of the pit to represent him. Because I was a single mother doing all I could do for my children. And this is why I cover them daily. And if somebody here don't like it, they can go someplace else to worship. They spoke against my life. Back where I came from. They fight my children. Physically. And spiritually. One day. I remember somebody called me. And said to me. You're not taking your children out of Jamaica. I couldn't answer. Because I was not documented. But it was only a matter of time. It was only a matter of time. My children left. One is left behind. When you pray, remember my children. People of God, when you pray, remember my children. This is why I am transparent on social media. Transparency is vulnerability. It's openness. I just want you to know. But there was a scripture that I read. That God forgave me of my many sins. Once I turned my life over to him. And lived my life to please him. And not being jealous of anybody. Yes. Not being envious of anybody. And some of the men that I've been with. They hate me today. Why? Because I turned my life over to Jesus. They can't stand me. Why? My God. Jesus. I thank God for his goodness and his mercies. Those who knew me knew that what I was doing it was for my children. It was not out of love. It was for my children. Making all those sacrifices. Hallelujah. He said he didn't come to the righteous. He came to sinners to bring them to repentance. If your life is perfect, this platform is not for you. If your life was perfect, then this ministry is not, it won't benefit you. Because he took me out of nothing. Nobody knew what I was going through. Because I kept a straight face. Always happy. Always laughing. Even when I'm dying inside. Hallelujah. But I hear the Lord said. It is finished. I hear the Lord said. It is finished. Glory to God. In the book of Matthew chapter 9. Welcome to Breakfast with Jesus, wherever you're connecting from. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance. It's an assurance that Jesus is yours. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Jesus. Jesus Christ himself said, I didn't come for people who are perfect. I didn't come for the righteous, the Pharisees and the scribes. Because those were the perfect ones. He said, I came for sinner. Those who are down in the pit. Those who demons are fighting. Hallelujah. It is finished. The other day, my daughter was... About to get some things done for the ministry. And the Lord told me to bless your daughter's hand. You don't know what kind of demon she's going to face. So I grab her hand. 
and I prayed. And I prayed. And the first person she came in contact with was my father, my biological father. And when she grabbed him, I was on the phone and I could feel the Holy Spirit doing something because she was on a mission for the Holy Spirit. People have got to be mindful of what you say when you don't know. Make sure you know what you're saying. Don't assume. I, I said to him on the phone, you felt the, the chills going through your body. He said, how do you know? I said, because I anointed her hands before she came. Pray for your children daily. Pray for them. It doesn't matter what condition they are in right now. Pray. Remember where he picked you from. Jesus said, I did not come for the righteous. I came for the ones who the demons are fighting. I came for the ones who the demons have arrested. I came for those who are in bondage. He said, I didn't come for those who are scribes, who know the Bible scripture from cover to cover. No, I don't know. I don't care about those. That's what Jesus said. I care about the ones who are lost, the lost sheep. He said, I care. Those who are the ones I came for. Remember, Zachariah saw Joshua in the realms of the spirit. He was wearing dirty clothes. His clothes were filthy. When God was getting ready to elevate Joshua, he was a dirty man. He was not clean. Hey, somebody, worship God with me today. The devil will always fight. That's his position. The devil has been anointed to destroy, to tear down, to break up, to mash up, to rob, whatever they can get, to kill or to destroy. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to. But pray and cover the children. If God bless your womb, or if God bless you, yes, your seed, pray for them. You don't know what kind of demon they will come in contact with. She said to me, Mommy, my daughter, Mommy, I remember this lady. And I remember before I left Jamaica, the lady said to me, Look how long your mother is gone overseas. Isn't she going to take you guys up? And she said to the lady, one day, one day I will reach. <laughs> oh God, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus. <laughs> and Jesus Christ, than his blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground are sinking sand. She was at like maybe 12 or so. Glory to God. She said, Mommy, it was the next day I found out that I'm leaving Jamaica. And she kept this thing in her heart for over maybe 15 years or 16 years. And when she said it to me, I said, wow. Somebody said that same thing to me. And it was during the time when they were about to leave. What are you doing for your children? What kind of sacrifice? <laughs> what kind of sacrifice are you making for your children? What kind of pity party are you going to sit down and have? What did you do for your children? What are you doing? People are looking. People are talking. Glory to God. What kind of sacrifice are you making? I ran away and leave my children behind because I was in an abusive relationship. Getting kicked down in the streets in Spanish town. Getting disgraced daily, beat down. Everybody had something to say because they know my story. But I want to tell somebody the man was blind. And guess what the disciples was asking Jesus? 
What did this man do to be born blind? Jesus said his parents never did anything. Oh God, the man was born blind because God needed glory out of his life. I was blind. I couldn't see those that I was laying down with. I couldn't see those that I was begging. I couldn't see those who were taking advantage of me because I was blind. Oh God, I did it for my children. I did it for my children. I made sacrifices for my children. I was not selfish. I was selfless. And my children were not the only ones who benefited from the abuse and the things that I was going through. Friends were enjoying it. They were laughing at me and they were enjoying it. Today I came to tell somebody, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I couldn't work for the devil any longer. So I quit, I fire Satan, and I begin to work for the Lord. That's my story. I couldn't work for Satan any longer. He couldn't bone me any longer. God came and grabbed me. Hallelujah. God came and snatched me from the palms of Satan. So this is why I'm so passionate about the prayers that I pray for my children. Even if they never make it to heaven, I'm praying for them. I'm praying because I know they will go to heaven. Job said, even if my children sin, Lord, forgive them. Job said, maybe if my children sin, Lord, forgive them. God don't call righteous people. God don't use righteous people. God don't pay attention to those who are righteous, walking around and hold up their head up high. No, he said, I didn't come for them. In the book of Matthew, glory to God, chapter 9 and 13. He said, I never come for those who are righteous. I never come for those who are perfect. Glory to God. Jesus. The Bible said, then Jesus added. He said, now go and learn the meaning of the scripture. I want you to show mercy, not after sac not offer sacrifice. For I have come to call, not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. He didn't come for righteous. So we are here to dig them out of the pit and hold them by the hand and pray for them and help them to walk. That's the mission. That's ministry. That is ministry. Hela Baba Kosaya. That is ministry. If you think you're too righteous, God is not going to use you. I don't know who he sent me here to talk to today. But at five o'clock in the morning, I grabbed the young lady's hand and I anointed her hands and tell her to go. And tell her to go. And the first person she came in contact with was my dad. The second and the third and the fourth person she came in contact with, she said, oh my, they said, oh my God, that's Rev's daughter. She should be sitting there with her mother doing ministry. And the Lord convicted her right away. He said, stop it. Remember where I pick you from. The Lord began to tell the woman. He said, remember where I take you from. Remember what you were doing when you were her age. What she's doing. It takes anointing to do it. What she is doing, it takes anointing to do it. To drive around and look for people who need their breakthrough. And give them what they desire. Glory to God. What are you doing for your children? What, what kind of legacy are you leaving behind? The woman said, Rev, when I saw your daughter, I said, oh God. She needs to sit right next to her mother to do ministry. And the Lord convict the woman instantly. Instantly. And I can only say this because she called me and she told me. She said, Rev. I thank God. 
I thank God. I thank God. Because not every children will do that. Glory to God. They'll give you every reason not to do anything for ministry. Children. Not all of them are obedient. It's true. Not all of them are obedient. But Jesus said it on the cross. It is finished. He said, I came to bring sinner to repentance. So if you are here as a sinner, it's time to repent. If you are about Koshoda Boko Sataya, in the book of, let, let us dig into the word, into the book of Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to go a little deeper into verse 35. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 9, verse 35. Open your Bible. I just want to explain something before I get off here. I'm not going to be here for long. Jesus. Woman of great faith. Yes. And I thank God my four children, they prophesy. The four of them. They are nowhere with God. But God bless them. They prophesy. They prophesy. They prophesy to me. God used them. My God. Pray for my children, people of God. They are not perfect. But God is using them. Three of them gave their life to the Lord already. Three out of the four. But they all prophesy. Pray for them. They accept Jesus Christ as their personal savior. My God. But pray for my children when you pray. Because the devil fight them because I'm doing God's work. Hallelujah. In the book of Matthew chapter 30, uh, 9 verse 35. Let us read. Open your Bible. Welcome people of God. I see people connecting from all over. From... Uh, Connecticut, New Jersey, England, Canada, Jamaica, Trinidad, Kingston, Montego Bay, oh God, London, Birmingham, hmm. New Jersey, Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Hartford, Connecticut. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hababuko Shataya. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this on your page. None of us are perfect. When God was getting ready to destroy Sodom, it's because they were not walking right. And they refused to repent. People of God, it's time to repent. Let us look at the word. Verse 35. The Bible said, And Jesus went all about in the cities and the village, teaching in synagogues. It means that Jesus went all over the place, in different churches. He was not sitting down in one spot, prophesying. He was teaching. He was teaching the word. He went to many different places. Different churches, different cities and towns. Halababoko Shataya. Glory to God. My God. He traveled. And he went to different places and taught the word of God. Bible said he was announcing the good news. What is the good news? What is the good news? Jesus was going around announcing the good news. He was saying repent for the remission of your sins and believe the gospel. That's the good news, the gospel. It's our sword. Jesus was going around telling everybody repent and believe the word of God because every word of God is true. Glory to God. The Bible make it clear. He, and he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing sick and every disease among them. So he was not just, he was preaching. 
He was teaching because preaching and teaching is not the same. Preaching is going and going. Teaching is breaking down the scriptures. He was doing healing and deliverance. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. These are the things that Jesus was doing. Preaching, teaching, doing healing and deliverance. Setting them free from their demonic forces. So I thank God. And I pray that the things of God that you're doing, you will never face backlash. We come against every backlash. We bind up every backlash. Bind up backlash. The woman turned and said to my daughter, isn't your mother going to send for you guys? Isn't she there long enough? Hey! The devil is a liar. Jesus. He said, but when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. There are some reasons why some people call themselves Christian and they don't have a shepherd over them. It's no coincidence why some people cannot find a place. To have a shepherd over them. Because they are disobedient. Jesus was moved with compassion. Because the people were lost. He was going around praying for them. Teaching in synagogues. But the crowd keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And Jesus my God. The Bible said. Then their eyes have a Glory to God. The Bible make it clear he traveled through the towns and the villages teaching in the synagogue and giving them the good news which is the gospel and he healed every kind of disease and sickness. May you be healed today from any sickness and disease you have in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It means that when you are working with the Holy Spirit you are supposed to not just preach, you are supposed to not just teach, but you are supposed to heal sick because the word is in you. Hey, baby, Kosaya, the word of God is in you. Jesus, the Bible declare, mighty God. And when he saw the crowd, he had compassion because they were confused and helpless. Some people are helpless. They need the word of God. They need to Bakoshaya. They don't have any pastor over them. They don't have anybody to talk to them, to encourage them, to feed them with knowledge and understanding of the word of God. Some people are lost. The Bible said they are lost sheep with no shepherd. We're talking Bible here. We're in the book of Matthew chapter 9. And if you're just joining, good morning and welcome to breakfast with Jesus. Happy Friday. Hey, glory to God. The Bible declared they were helpless. Like sheep without a shepherd. And he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenty. The, he said the harvest is truly plenty. Plenteous. Those were Jesus' words in King James. The harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. He said, pray now, therefore, that the Lord of harvest that will send forth laborers in his vineyard, in his harvest. He mean that there are some people that God is calling to be pastors. He said, pray. My God. He said, pray that the Lord who is in charge of the harvest, ask him to send more workers into the field. Who are the workers in the field? Pastors. There are a lot of sheep out there without any shepherd. And the Bible declare that Jesus was moved with compassion. He couldn't do it by himself. So he was saying, pray that God send pastor in your town. That God send pastor in your neighborhood. That God send pastor over you. My God, Jesus, Matarabha Kosaya. Jesus was moved. I came today to talk about the harvest. It is plenty, but there are no laborers. 
No one is willing to stand up to deal with the backlash. No one is willing to stand up to deal with the criticism. No one is willing to stand up because you know when a pastor stand up, he's been criticized. And if he's not careful, he will be annihilated. He'll be ostracized because by the same people that he will minister to. They criticize him. My God. So Jesus said to his disciples, pray. Because the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. The reason why women are in ministry is because men refuse to do it. The reason why God is using women is because the men are hiding. They are weak. I'm saying it because it's true. So men don't see themselves as leaders. They are bound. They are still in bondage. They are not free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Man to the book of satire. Somebody said they are happy to catch a little bit of the word. Welcome. God bless you. Mighty God. Jesus Christ was moved by compassion. When he see the people that were fainting. They were sick. They got all kind of disease. They need somebody to keep them. Not just for one moment. You see. He know his time was temporary. So he was saying to the disciples, pray that these people get people to pray with them. They get good pastors to stand with them, to feed them with the word of God. And I always talk about Jeremiah chapter 3 where he said, I will send pastor according to my heart. My God. He said, I will send you pastors according to my heart. So now he's telling the disciples, pray. So we get more people that are willing to take backlash, to take backstabbing. Because a pastor receives backstabbing daily. A pastor is, yes, my God. Do you know how many backlash this ministry get daily? Even when I don't go live. Even when I don't go live. Do you know how many backlash? Backlash from friends. Backlash from family members. Yes, family members. They do backlashing too. Hey, they give the worst backlash. Remember, Jesus' brethren never follow him in his ministry. And I'm talking about his siblings. And he said, no prophet is respected in his own country. They will resist you. Ministry is not easy. This is why Jesus was saying, pray that we get more people to come and join that want to serve. Because everybody wants to receive. Nobody don't want to give. When you're serving, you're giving yourself. You're transparent. You open up yourself to them and their demons. Some people all their life they are fighting demons and they never get delivered and their children were born into that thing and the children are facing powerful demons. So these people don't really have pastors over them because the demons that they are fighting prevent them from having a shepherd. They fight every pastor that come their way. They backlash. Yes. Yes, people of God. Pastor job not easy. So Jesus said, when he look and see the amount of work to be done because the people are suffering, glory to God. He said, the harvest is plenty. He didn't say plenty. He said, plenty us, mighty God. Jesus said, the harvest is plenty us, meaning it great. But the workers are few. There are not enough people in ministry. But some people personally don't want to get involved in ministry. Because they know what they used to do to ministers. Yes, Sister Shanna. They know how they used to criticize. Some people even try to kill pastor. You know how many pastors die prematurely? And it's not by accident. It's not of God. Do you know how many people 
came together and destroyed pastors. And now they are without, without a shepherd. Because they destroy the man or the woman of God that God placed above them to feed them the word of God. There are many churches today who don't have pastors. I receive offers that I couldn't take because God didn't say go. There are churches, many churches today without pastors. So there are some people now who said God called them to ministry. And they are giving church hell. Because they don't know what to do. They are not learned. And they make a mess daily. Because they don't understand the things of God. They don't have the word of God. So they say God called them. And all they do is destroy their pastors. Destroy other pastors. Some leave the church before the time. Before they were finished learning. Like Judas. He was not finished. He didn't receive the Holy Spirit. So he left. Yeah. Some of them leave the church before the time. Just like Judas did. He was not, God was not done with him. My God. That's not a friend, that's an enemy. Bind it up. Bind it up. God is showing you that the person is actually an enemy. Hallelujah. Sometimes, you know, you pray for God to move your enemies and the people that he move are the ones that said they are friends with you. So you got to just bind it up. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it is done. Good morning. If you're just joining, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Sister Glassel, I have to give you a call later on this afternoon. Glory to God. Because I don't understand what's going on over there in England. The devil is a liar. The devil is a big liar. And he has lost the battle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Welcome. As you join, welcome. Go ahead and share this on your page. Share this message on your page. The reason why there are so many empty churches, even if it's dear and a few members are dear, they don't have no pastors because the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. And Jesus said, pray that we have some pastors to come and teach the people because every some people every church they go they make trouble they disgrace pastor they get close to the pastor next thing they became friends with the pastor go to pastor house and then they turn against pastor the devil is using them they have no they are lost hallelujah jesus mighty god he said pray therefore that the lord of harvest that will send forth laborers. Only God can send a pastor to you. Some people call themselves. God didn't say that they are. Some people do it because they, God blessed them financially. And because God blessed them financially. God has endowed them financially. So they can be kingdom financiers. They call themselves pastors. No they are not. They are not pastors. If you want to know if they are pastors, they can't do the work of God. They have other engagements. So this allows you to see that they were only called to finance the kingdom of God. That's why some pastor cannot preach. Hallelujah. There are some pastors who are not, who are not supposed to preach. Just to finance kingdom. Go around and bless church with money. It is ministry to be a kingdom financier. That's a position. People of God, it's time for us to know who we are. And some of us, we are too grown to be still behaving like kids in ministry. Many of us, we know we don't have any shepherd over us. And we, we resist everybody who God sent to us. We resist them because we have our own perception of what they are supposed to be. But God told Moses, he said, Moses, listen to me now. I'm sending somebody before you, the angel, to prepare the way. 
Don't provoke him. Because he will not pardon your transgression. My spirit is in him. That's what God told Moses. He said, Moses, stop playing. Quit with your foolishness and your bad behavior. I'll send someone. My God. Hallelujah. It's in the book of Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20. He said, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in all the way. To bring thee into the place which I have prepared. So God is sending your leaders to help you to get to the next level. But if your behavior is not right, this person will leave your life according to Exodus. The Bible said, be aware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgression. For my, my name is in him. Glory to God. But if thou indeed shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy to thine enemy, O oh God, and an adversary to thine adversaries. It means that when you are obedient to God and do his will and obey who he sent before you, God will fight your enemies. He will open your doors. And he will fight your enemies. Hallelujah. Your doors, you cannot open your own door. This is why he said, Behold, I have opened a door in Revelation. He went until he get all the way to Revelation. He said, Behold, I have opened a door that no man can shut. So you are in trouble if you don't have a shepherd over you. You are in serious trouble. You are in big trouble if you don't have a shepherd because Jesus said, pray to his disciples. Pray that God can send my God, a laborer over you so they can feed you. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Some people are suffering. Can't wait for God to bless them with a good pastor so they can walk right, so they can learn the ordinance of God. Jesus. What kind of legacy are you leaving for your children? Everybody's life is not the same. But we all have access to the kingdom of God. True obedience to God. We all have access. Through our obedience to God. Many of you are saying that you don't want a woman pastor. I heard it all the time. Listen to me. That's how we were raised up. They fool us. They fool us. Some people are saying, I'm not going to listen to no woman preacher. Who told you that? Who was there with Jesus Christ the whole time? Jesus' gang was loaded with female. Jesus had a gang of female. And they supported his ministry. They were right there with him. Not one of those women ever. They didn't deny Jesus. No. They didn't deny him like Peter did. They didn't betray him like Judas did. Hello. It was a woman who met Jesus first after he died. At the tomb. They, were, they, 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 they committed themselves to the work of God. They were loyal. And even in Paul's ministry, Paul reminded us of some names of women that were right there with him in ministry. Who told somebody that women don't preach? The book of Corinthians, it's a misunderstood. A lot of people misunderstand. A lot of people misunderstand the book of Corinthians because even in that same book, Paul was mentioning names of women, respected women who help him in ministry. Ministry has many areas. Even to help someone. I'm going to say something right here. 
Jesus washed the foot of the person that betrayed him. Jesus could have broken the leg of Judas because he have washed feet. He washed their feet. Jesus could have killed Judas a long time, but the thing had to come to pass. Sometimes some people have to hurt you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because that's why they came to your life to hurt you. Sometimes some people have to hurt you because this thing got to happen. Some people have to hurt us in order for us to let them go. They have to show us their side, their other side. Sister Angela, some people have to show us their other side. What, what's in their heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. When someone tells you something, believe them. When something comes out of somebody's mouth, pay attention. That's what they are thinking about you. Listen good. Somebody told me a couple of months ago that I think too deep. I said, it's not me. It's not me. Because the devil will allow them to say what's on their heart. So you can have, yes, so you can have clarity. The devil will allow some people to do some things in front of you and they still can't understand how did that happen. It's the Holy Spirit that's in you that is Allowing the devil that's in them to manifest. So when people hurt you, don't be disappointed. When they say negative things about you, Sister Angela, don't feel bad. Glory to God. Sister Marcia, when people try to hurt you or even take from you, don't feel bad. Because if they didn't do that, you would have still keep them. So they do that because their time is up. When a person's time is up in your life, hey! When their time is up in your life, they will do all manner of evil to get out of your life. Just like when the demons in that man in the book of Mark chapter 5, the demons were ready to go. And they, when they saw Jesus, they said, Jesus, son of David, why are you coming to trouble me? Jesus said, what is your name? He said, Legion, because there are many of us. There are some people with a whole lot of demons. Remember, he was asking Jesus, don't come near. Jesus, please don't come any closer. But when Jesus called out the demons to come out of him, he didn't want Jesus to leave. When Jesus was leaving, the demoniac said, can I come with you? Jesus said, no, go and let the people see you. Go and let your pastor see you. Some of you need some pastor in your life because you don't have a shepherd over you. Some of you keep saying that God called it a ministry. But you are disobedient. It's true. And disobedience is worse than witchcraft. Disobedience is worse than witchcraft. Don't go into ministry expecting anything. Go with an open heart. God will always bless you. And don't complain. Jesus Christ said, pray that the Lord of harvest, because he is the one who sent the harvest. To listen to me, people of God. It's time for many of us to begin to ask God to send us leaders. Because the harvest is plenty. There are so many people out there who don't have anybody to minister to them. Thank God for social media. It's true. Some people are stuck at their job. And they don't have any place to go for worship. When God sent a pastor to your life. Receive them gracefully. Because it's not of, listen to me, it's not of the flesh. It's of God. When a true man of God enter your life, you will know. When a true woman of God enter your life, you will know. Because God will confirm what's on your heart. God will confirm what's on your heart. So when God sends his people to you, you will know. 
He will use other people to tell you by the things that they, that happened. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's not the people that come into your life that be a blessing, that make it a blessing. Some people can come to your life and cause you a curse or a burden. Some people come to your life and that don't mean that because they are blessed, it make you bless. It's what they do, the effect that they have on you that is considered to be a blessing. Hallelujah. I encourage you to go ahead and begin to share this word. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. My God. Somebody go ahead and share this on your page. Some people come to your life and they didn't come to bless you. They come to take. They come to see what they can get. And because that's their assignment to take. Some people are not givers. They have nothing to offer. It's for what they can take from you. The woman said when she saw my child, what dropped in her spirit? She said, why isn't she with her mom helping with the ministry? And instantly the Holy Spirit convicted her and said, she's doing the work of God. Where were you at her age? Where were you at that age? Busy working for another person. My God. I don't know who God sent me here to talk to this morning. But be careful. What kind of legacy are you leaving for your children? What kind of work are you doing for the Lord? What kind of sacrifices are you making for the Lord and your children get to see that? Hallelujah. <laughs> One say he don't go, he don't study the Bible, he go to the computer and preach. So where is the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit is in the word. You have to open the book. Listen to me, if you're here and you don't own a Bible, we have some here, brand new, that was given to the ministry. They're free. Brand new, but the reason why I chose younger people to give it to because they're fine print, you see? The prints are fine. It's fine print, but they're free. If you're here in the United States, you can send for yours if you don't have one. But they are free. They are all free. They are brand new. If you're here and you don't own a Bible, you can send for your copy. I I just show you right here. They are fine print. Fine print. Hallelujah. We are in the book of Matthew chapter nine. So let me show you what Matthew chapter nine looks like in this Bible. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They are fine prints. So therefore, I specifically, you know, young people have, they got better eyes than us. Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to highlight it. Hallelujah. And verse 35. Just to show you uh, what, what I'm trying to say here. That is Matthew chapter 9 and verse 35 highlighted. It's very fine, but it's for the young people that have good eyes to read. I wear binoculars. I can't read fine print. I can read it with, with my glasses on. Amen? But I cannot read it without it. Even if I try. <laughs> I can't read without it. But I can read it. It said, I will extol thee, O my God. I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day I will bless thee and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. And the greatness is unsearchable. You see, the, the, there is no search to God understanding. And right here David is saying, in greatness, his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works 
to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. So it is written, it is written that we are supposed to praise God. It is written that if you're not saved, you're going to hell. There is no sugar coat. I cannot come here and lie to you. There's a word in the Bible that said you have to give your life to the Lord. Jesus said when Nicodemus went to Jesus to, in, at night secretly because he went to Jesus by night to question Jesus. Jesus said, listen to me. You have to be born again. You must. You must be born again. Nicodemus said, how am I going to be born again? I have been already born. Am I going to go back in my mother's womb? Jesus said, no. You have to be born by the water and the spirit. So it means that. It means that you have to be baptized. You must be born again. When Nicodemus went to Jesus, he was slick. He went, he, he think he was slick. You see, he was a Pharisee. He was intelligent. So Jesus said, wait a minute. You're supposed to know these things. Why are you going to ask me if, you, if I'm going to go back in my mother's womb? You're a Pharisee. You're well learned. You're educated. You should have known when I say you must be born again. Because you're bright. You finished school. You know everything. You're supposed to know that too. So you hear this. I know some people are following this platform that are not baptized. It's time to go and get baptized. Jesus Christ told Nicodemus, it's not a secret. You must be born again. You must be born again. Hallelujah. Somebody said it's a confirmation what I'm saying. You were speaking to yourself. Thank God for your life. Amen. You must be born again. Don't wait and say you're going to finish with the world before you give your life to God. He said, young man, I call upon you because you're strong. Stop complaining. Stop whining. God gave you life and he gave you enough so you could have children. Take care of yourself. Fix your spiritual life. Somebody say he came for a season and a reason. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. We don't lie here. On this joint, El Shaddai prayer tower, uh-uh, no lies. You got to be transparent. Transparency is opening up yourself and speak the truth. And this is why we do retreat. So where you can come and be yourself and we pray with you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus. People of God, I just want to say once again, welcome and I thank God for your life. My God. Hallelujah. I thank God for what he's doing in your life. We thank God for El Shaddai prayer tower. Glory be to God. I thank God for what he's about to do for you and your children. Yes, they are tomorrow's future. I stress about children because tomorrow, they are our tomorrow. I don't stress about old folks because we're praying with them. But we worry about the children. We put them in the hands of God and cover them daily. Glory to God. We pray every day for ourselves. And oh, yes. Hababuko Shaya. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My God. Whatever the Lord touch your heart to do for ministry, do it, people of God. Don't let the devil rob you. This is the moment where I will let you know that you can go ahead. If you have an offering, the information is there. If you want to order your anointing oil or your prayer shawl, go ahead and do so. If you want to, yes. And if the Lord touch your heart to help us 
in our charity event that's going on on the 15th today is the 9th on the 15th we will be releasing the funds that we collected hallelujah we are doing charity every month we bless people financially with whatever we collect and it's people from the platform my god we are blessing them with cash if you are here and the lord touch your heart to bless the ministry make sure you be specific and write donation for charity if you're gonna support the ministry hallelujah my god jesus go ahead and do so the number is eight six zero six three four eight five five seven thank you holy spirit the number you can use zell cash app or paypal this is the moment that we take some time to release this information because many of you are here for the first time you don't know anything about this ministry this ministry bless people with cash money and the money is supposed to be a blessing in your life the money is supposed to be a blessing in your life so i encourage you to go ahead and i pray right now for every hand that will set forth financially to be a blessing to this ministry so we can continue to be on the air hallelujah for those of you who will bless it so we can have enough to give for charity we baba koshata i cover your finances right now in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i pray for you I pray for your job and wherever that money came from. I pray for a double portion to be back upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Go ahead, people of God. Support the ministry so we can have enough on the 15th to give to the people who the Lord have selected. Hallelujah. Welcome. That was breakfast with Jesus. Yes, we have to keep it real. People of God, we have to keep it real. We have to be honest. Jesus Christ himself said, pray for the Lord of harvest to send laborers. Who are the laborers? Pastors, leaders. Because he said the people didn't have any leader. When he looked at them, they fainted. They, they were lost sheep. Jesus had compassion. He said to them, come on now, let us pray for these people to get some pastors, to keep them going, to feed them with knowledge and understanding of the word of God. This is what Jesus was saying. Pray. Let us pray for them. He said first, I didn't come for anybody who is righteous. I came for sinners. And then he said when he saw the amount of people that show up, he was moved with compassion. He feels sorry for them. Because they were sick. Some have disease. And that's what he was doing. But it was more than enough. The more he keep praying, is the more they keep coming. So you see, there is no end to the work of God. So when you do it and your children see what you're doing for the Lord, not tearing down the pastor, not tearing down who God is using, your children will take your footstep. What kind of, I came today to ask you, what kind of legacy are you leaving for your children? Because if you speak against ministry and speak against pastor, your children are going to come and do the same thing. Because they're going to say, that's what my mama used to say about that pastor and that family. Yes! Whatever you, your children see you doing, or whatever, may, many of you, whatever you saw your parents did, that's what you're doing today. Many of you, your parents never pay tithes in church. They never talk about tithes. They never talk about offering. They never talk about blessing ministry. They didn't want to be used by God. They fight with sister so-and-so. They fight, yes. Some end up in physical fight. But we are in a different era. We are under the Mosaic law. We forgive our enemies and move on. We don't sprinkle blood from animals to disgrace anybody. And nobody will come to disgrace us. None. And for those who are waiting to disgrace us, listen to me. They better get a sofa, a leather one, so they get to live long and see that they won't be able to disgrace God's children. Hey! Whatever you do, your children will take after you. So be careful what you are doing and saying around them. 
Some people contaminated their children and now they don't even want to go to church because of everything they heard about church was negative. They don't even own a Bible. Glory to God. This is why Jesus said, pray that they receive. You see, it's hard for some people to get good pastor because once you have a good pastor, you will be receiving your deliverance. This is what Jesus was talking about. Glory to God. He want more workers in the field. Jesus want. He's saying. He will send for laborers into the harvest. Into his harvest. This was Jesus begging. So from the moment Jesus enter into Matthew chapter 1. My God. He was working. The Bible didn't say much about his childhood years. Neither John the Baptist. It didn't say much about their years. Because you see the Holy Spirit was with them. So they grew up fast. We have to pray. It's a blessing to have a good pastor in your life. This is according to the word of God. Don't tear down your pastor. Don't tear down no pastor. Some people cannot have good pastor because every pastor God sent. There are some churches that every pastor that go there have to leave. There are some churches around the world. Every pastor that go there have to leave. The members would fight them. Spiritually. It's a curse. My God. It's a curse. Can you imagine Jesus was asking the disciples to pray that we get good pastor to, 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 to work in, in the field? It's not easy. This is why I say I cover myself under the blood from backlash. Some people, they stay afar and they watch and then they criticize and they can't do it. They don't even know scriptures. So... Hallelujah. They don't know scriptures. They don't read the Bible. Somebody said one pastor said he don't have time to read the Bible. He just open up the computer and preach. The devil is a liar. You need a one-on-one -on -one with the Holy Spirit. We thank God for his goodness and his mercies. People of God, I encourage you. It's time to bless the ministry. It's time to bless the ministry so we can be, so we can do what God said. We can do the work of God. We can be a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. My time is up. I have to go. God bless you all. Remember, the number is 8606. I'm saying it and I'm smiling because somebody received their breakthrough today. 860-634-8557. Amen. God bless you.